Zegostowski, Lafferty, and Walton are playing in the middle and along the back. Blessy, Stout, Milizuski, he'll go back and forth between midfielder and defender, and Welke, the goalkeeper, is Tui. The Explorers are 2-1-1 one one overall, and they are looking for win number 100 today in the LaSalle coaching career of Pat Farrell. 99th win with the two victories that he has had this year. As far as the Penn Quakers are concerned for today, this team coming in with a 1-0 record, as we told you about. Morgan Blackwell and Steve Cohen go up front. Midfielders are Boggs, Foot, Goodwin, and Bonder. Along the back, it is Copeland, along with Hughes, Chen, and Schwartz. And Michael O'Connor, the sophomore from Springfield, Pennsylvania, is your goalkeeper for the Penn Quakers today. And Penn is coached by George O'Neill. George in his fifth season here with the Quaker program. And with 25 wins in his Penn Quaker coaching career. Well, Scott, uh, George O'Neill, uh, an excellent player in his own right. He played for Celtic and Scotland before he played for uh, NASL champ Philadelphia Adams. Of course, Pat Farrell trying to get his 100th win here today. There's a shot of the referees there. Joseph De La Pena in the middle and Steve Sobiak and Felipe Solani as uh, the linesmen. And uh, getting back to what I was saying about the, the tactics for this game, uh, Scott, uh, two keepers who are really, really doing well between the pipes there. there are a number of shutouts between the two of them. Uh, look for Penn to be very defensive-oriented. This is not a wide field, so that should help them. At the same time, though, LaSalle, this is their home field, very uh, attacking uh, type of uh, team. One thing to, to keep an eye on, as I mentioned before, Colasante will be going all over the place, and you really can't uh, figure out uh, if Penn's going to mark him in. The man will probably just play him straight up. They'll have a flat back three, which is the zonal markup, and there's a shot of... Mike O'Connor back in the pipes, and he is probably the more artistic, I guess you could say, of the two goalkeepers that you're going to end up seeing today. And we told you about O'Connor and what kind of year he had last year as he started pitching boatloads of shutouts. Actually, just a sophomore in the Ivy League Rookie of the Year last season at a Springfield, Pennsylvania, and Episcopal Academy. Had a great end of the year last year. Now, this is the other guy. He's not going to get a lot of style points. He's a run-ahead, come-at-you kind of guy. will come off the line and will go after it, actually look for him to initiate a little contact. Don Tui is listed at 6'2", 200 out of Wallingford, Pennsylvania, and Strathaven already has a couple of shutouts to his credit this year. Well, uh, Tui uh, shutting down uh, Dartmouth and, of course, Penn in their last game, and we're off here, Scott. LaSalle wearing the home white with blue stripes and yellow numerals. Always very pleasant for a play-by-play, man. Penn in the traveling blue. Moving down to that far side, Andre Spangler. We told you he was a late add to the lineup today, and the reason is he was waiting for the NCAA Clearinghouse to make a ruling on whether or not he was eligible. They said, yes, he is. He became eligible today and immediately jumped into the starting lineup along the front line. Well, Spangler looking to combine with Jeff Ramo. Jeff Ramo, uh, as you remember, last year came in a reserve. He's a very tough uh, target man, and he does have some good speed. Challenge one at the middle of the field by the Explorers, but Reed Goodwin in the middle of the field trying to take it down that sideline. It does for Cohen. Cohen looked for the center, but it's not there and swept on out of there. Scott, uh, Reed Goodwin uh, putting his mark on the game already. It looks like uh, George O'Neill and the Quakers. Reed Goodwin uh, trying to play uh, forward early then play direct right up to their front runners. Into the middle of the field, LaSalle defense trying to cut it off and does. And now here come the Explorers trying to mount a rush of their own. Going back down to this near side. They're going to play it back to O'Connor. There's a shot of O'Connor. Looks like he's going to go long on this. He's going to tell everybody to get up quickly. Challenge once again won by the Explorers. Jared Boggs now trying to play it down that right side. And it comes back over to the near side as the Explorers still control. Playing back to the middle of the field. There's Colasante. And now Brad Copeland. A little bit of a knuckleball. So they kind of volley back and forth. Into the middle of the field, we got a whistle. Well, what they do pretty much uh, with Calasante is play him as a tacky midfielder where he can get a lot more space. He played uh, traditionally up front as a front runner, but he gets whacked a lot. So he comes back into that uh, midfield third, gets a lot of space, and then starts running at players. That's when he becomes really dangerous. He can shoot, and he can take people on, and he's a very good passer. Into the middle of the field once again. Zegostowski tried to win the challenge. And now off on this near side and back to the middle of the field. Kind of missed time by Penn, but 
Here comes Reed Goodwin again, playing down once again to that side with Cohen. Cohen from his left wing position, got into the middle of the field. That's where they want it. They got a shot, and Tui picks up the one hopper. Well, Cohen getting some room there at the top of the 18 to get that shot off. They're going to have to shut him down. You see him jogging back right there behind Reed Goodwin. Here again, you're going to see a good first touch on this. He kept it low. It skipped a little bit. Those are the kind sometimes that trickle in, but Tui was up to the task. Cohen is the guy who got Penn's only goal with their win against Harvard last weekend, the only goal they've had of the year so far. This is just their second game. Heading challenge won by Jeffermel, and now down this near side is Spangler, and they are all over him. Taken away by Hughes, and Hughes has it swept away. Hughes, number 17 for Penn, as we see him jog back there. He's six foot six, so he's very good with his feet. Very deft touch coming out of the central uh, defender position for that flat back three for the University of Penn. A lot of players on the field like Hughes today out of Wallingford and Strathaven High School. Jared Boggs about to throw the ball in there, the right side of midfielder for Penn. He does throw it in. Not a whole lot happening. Now Boggs gets it back again. Looks like he wants to take it back to the outside and is stripped as it's knocked over the touchline. Well, Penn's going to have to adjust to this lack of space and play a little bit quicker, but out of, out of the defensive third, they've been trying to play uh, quickly up front. And that ball touched the hand inadvertently of the LaSalle defender as Zegastowski had to come up and touch his hand, so the Quakers come up with Jared Boggs. Here again, Boggs, uh, tough touch, though. He tries to get around the defender and throws a bit of a body block there, and uh, a little dangerous play. Free kick. And he got it in with a little bit of a bend, but Tui once again coming off the line to pick it up. Played to the middle of the field. And once again, a whistle. Apparently, Reed Goodwin going after it a little bit too hard. And there you see a look at Reed as he is going to be whistled for the penalty. Uh, Goodwin, as we mentioned at the outset, a tough defender in center of the field that time, uh, matching up against Calasante. Pretty much, uh, as we see Spangler tying his shoe, pretty much, though, uh, they're going to play Calasante straight up. But uh, Goodwin uh, and Chen may be uh, taking uh, the assignment from time to time. Of course, Spangler, we mentioned earlier that he's uh, just cleared uh, by the clearinghouse for the NCAA just recently. Matter of fact, it came this afternoon, the word down. So the LaSalle switched their lineup about 30 minutes before game time to get him in there. Play it ahead, and Henry Chen takes it over the touchline. Uh, Chen uh, played for the U.S. under-15 team at one point. Long throw in now. Welke got it to the middle. Kelisante set it, but it's knocked on out of there. LaSalle going to keep the pressure on. Tried a little chip down to the corner. It didn't work. Fight for control of the ball is won by Boggs, and he's just going to play up out of there in a defensive mode. And offside is going to be the call against Penn. Oh, check that. Some good fighting there for Boggs. It's been Dewey getting set at, uh, Tui getting set at the far post there. Apparently, Boggs coming down the sideline was interfered with, so now Steve Cohen gets the kick. Last time from nearly the exact same spot, they elected to put it right in on Tui. Let's see if they try that strategy again. A bend for it, Tui's flying for it, can't quite control it, and it's knocked back out of there by his teammates. Opportunity at a shot, Penn couldn't quite settle. And now coming back to the near side, Cohen on his horse after it down toward the corner. With a cross. And headed on out of there. Pushing ahead, and now, once again, the big defender, Thomas Hughes, knocks it over the touchline. Plessy doing some good defending to get that ball early for LaSalle, but uh, getting back a couple of plays, uh, Tui uh, getting off his line. He's got to come up with that ball when he comes off his line. He knocked down some people, but he didn't come up with the ball. So he's got to get uh, control of that ball and establish air superiority right there. Uh, uh, the attackers from uh, Penn are going to notice that and uh, try and challenge him as we see George O'Neill on the sideline there. Long throw in, but nobody there to get it. Quakers play up. Trapped nicely by the Explorers, and now Boggs plays straight up the field. Tui well out of the box. That's a gutsy goalkeeper. Well, it's a, the modern keeper comes out and plays what they call sometimes a second sweeper. He gets out there and takes the space that the, the traditional keeper normally wouldn't. 
On this near side now, Zygostowski trying to find the middle, and it's cleared on out of there by Hughes up in the air. Not going to quite make the touch line, or will it? And it will. So the throw in now for the Explorers. The throw in is there. There's an opportunity. Colasante trying to squeeze off his shot, got blocked away by Copeland. Now back into the box once again. And this time O'Connor has to grab and try to keep alive on the end line, and he did. Yes, he did very well with that. He has feet, even though they went out of bounds. The ball was still in, and it's play on. and trying to build up the left-hand side through Copeland, one of the captains. Copeland carrying to the midfield area. And apparently his man went one way, ball went the other, but back to get it and keeping the pressure on. For the Penn Quakers. And a push from the back. That's going to be called on Henry Chen. Colasante not shy to shoot. The ball comes back again. Eventually, he winds up the second time. This one's cleared in the air. Not a good clear, but O'Connor can get onto it. But again, that's why Colasante is so dangerous. He's not afraid to shoot anytime, anywhere. You know, coming into the day, already 19 shots on the season. And he has only played in three of the Explorers' four games. Cross is going to go. Actually, I believe that might have gone actually through the football goalposts. Well, uh, Goodwin doing some very good defending there on the left-hand side, trying to shut that cross down. Comcast Network has a way to help put your family first. It's Emmy-nominated Family Talk. Each Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. at 5.30 p.m., make it a point to put your family first with Family Talk, only on the Comcast Network. Kick from the back by O'Connor into the midfield area. Box keeps it alive for Cohen. And now Boggs out of the pack with it. Trying to find some place to go with it. And he is turned off. Goodwin trying to keep it alive. And once again, back to Goodwin. There's Copeland back to the middle. That's Brian Foote coming to the near side. Foot just a little bit too much of the lead. I was going to say Foote, very dangerous uh, on the turn there. He scored the winning goal last year against Cornell. You'll see him push forward as an attacking midfielder as we see Hughes getting back into the central defending area. So now the throw in for the Explorers, and once again, Zegostowski is the guy who takes care of that. And on this near side, Jeffrey Mal had it taken away. LaSalle, however, will get the throw in. And the designated long throw in man now steps up. That's Welke. Trying to be accurate, he got it there. And now he's gonna get a chance for a cross. Got the cross into the box. However, Colasante can't handle it, and Chen clears it away. First touch for Cohen. And out of this near side, an attempted save, but it didn't quite get there. Well, Penn really playing uh, the counterattack soccer there as that ball was knocked upfield. There were three passes, and that ball uh, just trickled out of bounds just uh, by inches. So uh, by design there, Penn uh, trying to get out of their uh, defensive midfield third uh, very quickly and a whistle as LaSalle will get an opportunity to take the kick that'll be Dan Stout senior defender out of Newark Delaware back him up Calling out, as you can hear the signals. Nice serve into the box, but it flies on past everybody and has to be headed out of the way for the Penn Quakers. A little bit of gamesmanship there. Stout trying to get the, the attention of the, the, the defenders while he's talking to the ref, telling the, the, the nearest defender to back up. And now played ahead, that's Jared Boggs. It's again one... Pan attacker amidst a bunch of LaSalle defenders. And now here's a little bit of room for the Explorers. A little bit of a push off, no call. They play on, and Lehman takes it over the touchline. Some good defending by Lehman there. Zegostowski probably should have first time that the Spangler there on the counter there. Here you see it. He could have first time the Spangler would have ran right onto it. Spangler, a little fancy footwork down on the corner. Boggs takes it away, plays back to the middle of the field for Hubner. Hubner briefly had it taken away. And he megged him, didn't he? Yes, he did. And it was a nice ball he put across there, too. He just gets to it to the last second. Some nice uh, moves there by Hubner. Uh, 
There again, we're gonna see a bit of a bump there. No, he overrode that tackle, he, he did it well. Tui with the punt. He's got some power behind that. Lehman settled it down with the head, but LaSalle on the attack. Nice little touch from Colasante. And now Spangler plays ahead. Colasante in the box is dangerous, but Penn clears it not far enough. LaSalle still with an opportunity. Jeffermo hits the ground before he could get a good shot at it. And Hughes steers it out of the box. A lot of poise from Hughes there, Scott, to get this ball forward. Now they're into the midfield third. That's a good ball. Penn was trying for a little bit of a counter there, but they didn't get it. And once again, Dan Stout plays back to the middle. And Subner. And playing ahead down toward the corner, Boggs in a bit of a foot race. He got there, got the cross, but LaSalle up to the challenge as Dan Stout once again jumps in front of the goalkeeper and clears it out of the way. Stout did very well to build out of the back there, winning the ball, beating the player very calmly. Last year, you might remember him on Comcast there with a ponytail today. A uh, bit of a crew cut and a uh, smooth sailing. And he's been sailing smooth uh, for the last four years for LaSalle as well. Cohen set up Boggs and Boggs Got the shot toward the end line, not with much on it, though, and Tui very easily takes care of it. So far, Penn has had more shots on that guy, Don Tui. They've had a couple and a couple of opportunities that haven't resulted in shots down on the box. Uh, you're right, Scott. It seems that uh, right now Penn uh, uh, doing a little more penetration into, the, into their attacky third into the box, although O'Connor's been called on to get off his line a couple of times. Off the throw in, LaSalle with control. Spangler fighting for his life with Copeland, and that little pushing and shoving match down there is going to result in a whistle. You know what's going on, too, Scott? The University of Penn, they're pressuring the ball very well in the defensive third and midfield third, and they're not allowing too many crosses. Often you'll see a double team, you see a player come off the mark and go help someone that's on the ball. Opportunity for Colasante to set things up. And he does. Spangler got the touch on it. And it goes over the end line. There's Stout giving directions there out of the sweeper position, number four. Senior for LaSalle and uh, very, very organized in the back. And again, uh, we have a corner kick coming up for LaSalle. He's again, trying to set up uh, some kind of tactical moves there at the top of the 18. Now it looks as though this is going to be a kick that's not going to be toward the goal mouth, but rather toward the back. And a couple of your midfielders then get up and get a chance with a little momentum ahead of steam to take a whack at it on a first touch. We shall see. Played across. Right through the hands of the goalkeeper. O'Connor still fighting for control, and he comes down with it. O'Connor visibly upset with himself, and uh, the same thing that I said about Tui. Both keepers always try to establish air superiority in a box by coming off the cross. You see him get off his line, does well, gets up in the crowd. No challenge, just a little bit nervous there, and it's bouncing around, but uh, lucky for him, he uh, pulls it out of the crowd. Lucky for him, Henry Chen was back there, and it was Henry Chen who touched first after it went through the hands of the goalkeeper. Lay on that far side now. And it will be a pen throw and I believe. And Quakers will eventually get the <laughs> will eventually get the throw in, but we can tell you that we want you to join Bruce Beck and talk sports. Comcast Sports Talk. It's Monday through Thursday. It's live at 10, and it's only here on the Comcast Network. Osante trying to take over the midfield area. And now Spangler just tries to control. Knocked out of the way by Lehman. And a low-flying helicopter here. <laughs> Getting buzzed. I don't think we were allowed to do that on television. No, <laughs> mass unit. Spangler has it taken away as Copeland hits it toward the touch line, and the ball last touched the foot of Steve Cohen. Some nice touches there. Trying to turn, holds on, and you can see Colasante uh, out of, just out of the picture trying to get in. Fight for the ball, and along the end line, Ben Quakers almost gave it up. Terrific single effort from Jeffermel. Here again, you're going to see the battle go on here. Jeffermel using his big body, trying to turn against Hughes, and a uh, bit of a fair tackle, play on. They get a corner kick for their work. Second corner kick for LaSalle in this one. 
Second corner kick in basically as many minutes, and this time O'Connor's up to the task as he catches it against his chest. O'Connor doing well to get, get the ball that time, and of course also Reed Goodwin in there, uh, blocking out some space to, to help him. The counter's on. Yep, Quakers coming with a head of steam now as they take it down to the corner. That's Hubner. And Hubner plays right across, still up for grabs. And an opportunity for a first touch for Brian Foote, but his teammate headed it away from him. <laughs> if I was Brian Foote, I'd be upset, too. He, he hit that, that's the ball a striker or a tacky midfielder dreams about. It's coming right out of the air. You just want to hit that volley. He had enough time, and unfortunately, here we go. We see O'Connor get off his line real quick here and make the save. O'Connor just let go of a kick across the midfield stripe, and a play, continue, play continues now in the midfield area. A little bit of touch and a whistle now as the Sal will get an opportunity to advance it. And then that play where uh, Brian was trying to, Brian Foote was trying to hit that for Penn. I believe it was Healy got in, got in his way. And uh, Brian Foote, as we mentioned earlier, scored the winning goal against Cornell last year when they were ranked 18th in the country. Now, right now, if you missed it at the top of the broadcast, Penn is number 21 after having played just one game. And, Surprising the defending Ivy League champions from Harvard, but people kind of expected this from Penn this year. Returning all 11 starters. They were a young team. They played eight freshmen at a time last year. And, of course, you know, the captains, uh, Blackwell and Copeland and Goodwin doing a fine job uh, pulling those uh, players along. Integrated them very well into the team. Oh, it's not they try to fight off, too. He's not up to that task. His Boggs, with some fancy footwork, comes clear, but he hit Hubner right in the back with it. Uh, it's really unfortunate for Ben. The last, uh, some of their last attacking plays, uh, players getting in the way. That was a tremendous dribbling, uh, improvisational moves there by Boggs. Trying to put the killer pass through. It was on. Hughes played back to O'Connor, and O'Connor plays back to the midfield area. Headed out of bounds over the touchline. See Boggs take a good first touch here. Now he's at the space. Good touch with his left foot, chops the ball back, sole of the foot move. Now he's got some space. He's looking for the left winger here, and unfortunately, you can see him right to the left of the picture. That's who he was going for with that killer pass for the blindside run. Middle of the field, Goodwin takes it down toward that left corner. But Tui once again steps out near the 18 and pulls it in. You just see the establishment here early on. This is a very aggressive Goalkeeper. Taking it down this near side. Here's an opportunity to rush for LaSalle. Maybe one touch too many along the line. And now into the middle. Spangler trying to clear it out front, and O'Connor dove on top of it. O'Connor gets on top of a hand grenade right there, and unfortunately, yes, uh, Spangler probably should have played the ball across the first time, but uh, did some very good uh, shielding on the line there, Lehman with the shot. Lehman did a terrific job of getting in front of the goal mouth and steering it away. Otherwise, that one had goal written all over it. So we're going to see the breakdown. That's like Spangler with the cutback, and then you can see Lehman uh, being Johnny on the spot there, shutting that down. He saved the goal. LaSalle with a very adept ball handling crew up front in Colasante and Spangler. And Al Lehman, who we were just talking about, plays it up the near side. Well, Scott, right now, I have to say, it's shifting a little bit in favor of LaSalle. But uh, one of the things to keep in mind, though, is that it seems that um, Penn has the better of the midfield, but it seems like once uh, uh, LaSalle gets into the attacking third, they're, they're coming more and more dangerous, getting behind the defenders there. Substitution now is Scott Swuzak. Out of Philadelphia and LaSalle High School. Comes in at a defense spot. Lehman has a little bit of a problem and basically gave it right to the attacker Spangler, who did get a touch in on O'Connor. And O'Connor using the drop kick. You know, anytime I tried to do that, I was worried I was going to fan on it. <laughs> Now along the back line, that's Dan Stout. Stout playing back toward the middle. Jeffrey Moe using the head. And out to that far side. 
Middle of the field. Cohen wants to do something with it. Plays back behind. Here comes Foot. And played ahead, but cleared away. Big kick from Stout. He takes the big ball all the way down toward the end line. O'Connor will steer it back inside the box where he'll pick it up. And played back now to the middle of the field. Spangler now has his jersey ripped from behind. No call on the play. Brad Copeland had a fistful of jersey on Spangler, <laughs> but the, the official said play on. Not to be confused with fistful of dollars, but you're absolutely right there. He had him. He held him, and the uh, referee uh, did not see it, I gather, and uh, Copeland got away with one there. Now, too, he's going to play. There you go. I want you to be with us Thursday night at 6.30, the latest installment of On Base with yours truly, Scott Graham. This time around, Kevin Stocker and Mickey Morandini, and how will the Yankees do in the playoffs without George Costanza? <laughs> All of that coming up on base. Even after he drove that trophy around in the parking lot that time when he wanted to get fired. And there's the jersey hold. Ooh. I think if he was the jersey bound <laughs> Spangler, even stopped, figured he was going to get it, but uh, hoping got away with it. I caught the jersey bounce line, by the way, in case nobody else did, partner. <laughs> CC, on, on, on. They were looking for CC. You could hear it. And now Spangler trying to chase it down. And we've got a whistle that's going to go against Spangler. Mike Healy was back in the box. Yes, see Spangler trying to get onto it. Healy with a nice move. Puts it right behind him, finds the space, and uh, still fighting for the ball, and they get the call. Coming up on 24 minutes into the match now. Sealy gives chase down toward the end line. And with a little bit of a shove, it last touched Healy, so Sal's going to get a corner out of it. Well, you, you, a little bit of nonchalant on that one there. Probably should have drilled it off the, the attacker's knees or shins. And uh, unfortunately, Penn, fortunately, toward LaSalle, they have a corner kick. So Suzak. In the corner, playing it ahead. There's a touch, but it goes by. There in the box, Graham Walker did get a touch on it. Graham they, Walker, sorry. Graham Walker out of uh, CBA uh, in New Jersey, out of Lincroft, uh, coming on as a freshman there. Got a good first touch on that, too, and it uh, deflected, almost went in. Another corner. This one's number four for the Explorers. Colasante got it inside, and all they could do was steer it away. Now's Ralph Mayer for Penn, hit it over the end line, so back-to-back-to-back to back to back corners for LaSalle as they keep the pressure on. Scott, they keep drilling it to the near post and looking for the flick on. This is Mo at the near post. You can see him standing right there in front of the corner kick. Played into the center. Spangler tried to go up high for it. There's your attempted bicycle, kept it alive, and the shot is going to go wide. A little bit of a flurry up by the 18, including the attempted bicycle. And there you can see guy who probably had the best shot at it for LaSalle, Bill Blessy. Blessy, uh, usually a marking back coming forward on that, becoming dangerous in the box. And just those one and two touches, click-ons in the box, the thing was bouncing around like popcorn. And every once in a while, they get knocked in from the two or three yard lines. That's what Colasante does well, too. A little bit of a grab there by Brad Copeland, and the whistle blows. He has been very physical throughout. Anytime something has happened on that far side of the field. You see the foul. Oh, there's a hole from behind there. Copeland, Copeland got caught that time. And he's done that a couple of times. And you've seen the whistle blown on him once. And now Bills make that Dan Stout along the back line. Serves it in. Colasante got up high, but not quite high enough. Still alive, and the shot corralled by O'Connor up high. I believe that was Jeff Ramo with that as he runs back there with that uh, nice first time hit. Uh, correction, Graham Walker, the first time hit. And the deflection again, uh, it may well go in uh, off of somebody's head or their body. Played all the way up the field. Foot still alive. Now here's your dive, and Tui came up with it. And we have got a whistle on the play as Tui dove on top of the ball that was rolling in. Well, Foot uh, really uh, take it down. Here we can see here that shot first time by Walker. Again, a deflection. O'Connor got to jump up in the air. He was a step too far forward on that. And there it goes down. Foot goes down, as you can see him. Asking for the call, and Foot, again, very dangerous with uh, his speed. He sprinted forward on that, and he had to take him down. Spangler standing behind Foot now as Foot gets set. He's got a wall in front of him. Two, he set along the back line. 
We'll see what Foot elects to do. Sure, it looks like he's going to take a shot right over the top at it. It's going to be real tough for him to get an angle on this one as he steps in and spins it high up above and out beyond the back. Well, Brian Foot uh, trying to make the best of that. He's got to obviously bring it down just a little bit, but uh, a very, very good performer today. And I, I want to add, Scott, is that both teams playing very well. Here again, you can see it over the four-man wall and, uh, again, uh, tried to put a bend on it, but it got out of control. But uh, UPenn needed to get forward and get a get a free kick there because LaSalle's had him backed up. And again, LaSalle winning this midfield battle here. They got a set piece in the midfield and they're gonna try and keep backing him up as long as they can. Once again, it's Stout. There's your challenge. One by LaSalle and the push off came. They're gonna call Spangler for it this time as he was locked up with Brad Copeland again. Now Spangler uh, trying to push Copeland this time. Uh, it's not just going one way there. As you can see, uh, Spangler trying to knock Copeland off the ball that time. There's Spangler uh, eligible today by the clearinghouse. But happy about that, I'm sure. Yes, now played down toward the corner, but Boggs couldn't quite get control of it, and it comes up over the touchline. Yeah, UPenn's having a little trouble playing uh, direct as they started out with. But I must say, both teams are trying to play soccer today. It's a very exciting game. Still haven't seen a score. We have seen five corners for LaSalle here in the first half, and none yet for Penn, as that one trickles into the box and O'Connor settles it down. Alessante chipping a nice ball into the box. There's Spangler trying to obstruct a little bit, get behind Copeland, but uh, the ball uh, a little too far ahead of him. There's O'Connor. Played straight ahead and straight down the field. Fight is on, foot can't quite get there, and they play back behind. Tui's gonna let it come back to him. You can tell he's got a little little defense in him. I always wanted to do that too. <laughs> you see Jason Smoke about to throw the ball in there. He's uh, been added uh, to the pen lineup up front. He, he flicked a nice ball on uh, just a couple of seconds ago. And now Boggs trying to go one on two. Got the cross and wow, Tui on top of it. Tui the linebacker doing very well getting off that near post line. Pulled that one down very well. But Jared Boggs, as you can see, he's been keeping Penn in the, in the game today. And had an early ball across and tried wow. to sneak one there on uh, Tui. Healy was coming from behind him. And had that not get been gotten by Tui, there was an opportunity there for Penn. And now O'Connor back down at the other end controls. 15 and a half minutes left here, first half, still scoreless. And that one played along the side and out. That one is going to be played back toward the middle. And both teams kind of settling into a little bit of a rhythm here now. Here comes Penn with an opportunity for a counter. Box to the middle. Kind of like leading a fast break in basketball. Down to the side, he wants a shot at it and a good defensive play kept him out of the way. But Boggs doing well as we see Stout come out and make that nice sliding tackle. But Boggs keeping the attack going here and he's very fast out of the midfield, very good moves. He gets oh. all the way down just outside the box. They need to be doing more of that to, to stay in the game. That's a good play by Stout. Nice tackle. This one in the middle, challenge. And knocked out of there as the Explorers bring back the midfield. Once again, on this near side, it's Jeffermo. And Lehman touched it over the side. Play continuing quickly here. And Lehman got a piece of it. Played back in. Called Asante, very dangerous. Chan realized that and knocked it over the end line. So you got a corner kick coming up. Oh, there, there's a good matchup, though. He said Chen might meet Colasante. Colasante lost that one, but here it comes. Played back to the middle, and oh, almost an opportunity. Still a chance for LaSalle to set it and fire it. End of the box, it's up high. Spangler's got it loose in front, still on his feet. And Penn just scrapping to save their lives in there inside the box. LaSalle never could quite get a good shot off. Well, you know, the game, a little bit bounce, the, uh, the field bouncing, the, excuse me, the ball bouncing like that. A little bit bumpy up there. I wanted to settle it. And you can see, here it is. He wanted to settle it so he could get a good strike. But you can see it bouncing all around in here. O'Connor, a lot of courage coming off his line there. Two-fisted two punch. Spangler should, should have just let it go. Hit it first time. 
It's that kind of feel where it's bouncy, Scott. You don't want to put it back down on the field where it's going to bounce again. If it's in the air, you want to hit it right out of the air. Can you explain the second helicopter that's buzzed now here in the first half? <laughs> MIP. Dewey jumping in. Textbook form as he caught it out front and then corralled it in. And once again, Tui continues to be strong across the back line. He is yet to allow a goal this season. And now Spangler playing one on two. No help oh, there. He's going to have God. to do it himself. And you can see it got away from him. Spangler getting a good first touch on it. We've got to keep an eye on his fitness, too, because he's just been declared eligible today. I'm sure he's uh, uh, fit to a certain point, but is he game fit? And we'll keep an eye on that. Comcast Network will be back in Philadelphia next Wednesday for our college soccer match of the week. This time it's Temple at Drexel. It's Wednesday at 7.30, only here on the Comcast Network. Soccer 7 matchup next week here in Philadelphia. Well, last year, Drexel uh, really gave it their all, although they lost uh, to LaSalle, Calasante getting two goals in that. And, of course, uh, Right now, uh, they're in first place in the Philadelphia Soccer 7. Drexel's doing a very fine job, Lou Neal and Woody Hartman, the coaches. Contact at the midfield stripe. And apparently, we've got an injured Quaker. That's Chen. Henry Chen out of Medford, New Jersey. Here you see what happened. And uh, looks like uh, Chen uh, got hurt himself on the slide tackle. I think he's, uh, I think that might have been Jeff Mo or was that or Walker from behind. It's like he might have gotten hit high on the bridge of the nose or in the eye, actually. Hard to see from here, but he's having difficulty continuing. Yeah, Chen doing a, a fine job in front of that back three. A bit of a defensive midfielder, a lot of speed, a lot of toughness. And uh, a couple of plays ago, you could see Calasante pull the ball down well out of the air and try and turn on Chen and did, didn't actually get the crossover. But uh, Chen doing a good job as we see the trainer walking him, him off. Now, you know that LaSalle is playing football here for the first time since 1941 this year. We were here for the actual opener. Speaking of football, I want you to join Bruce Beck for the next installment of Rutgers Football Weekly with head coach Terry Shea. Rutgers Football Weekly, Thursday night at 11.30, right here on the Comcast Network. And Bruce Beck doing a very good job on the beach soccer, too. I see him often doing the play-by-play. -play. He does it all. Bruce Beck does it all, literally. Played in, and Hughes almost did his goalkeeper not much of a favor as it came in with just as much mustard as it came into the box, but for, fortunately for O'Connor, it was away from the goalpost. Here again, you can see Chen uh, trying to go down and slide tackle uh, Jeffrey Moe from behind. Played ahead by LaSalle. Checked that by Penn, and now Jason Smoke down toward the corner. Takes it along the end line and steered out of the way. There's your drive back to the middle of the field. Copeland trying to keep the pressure on. And now for the Quakers, Reggie Brown, who is in the game. Brown, I'm sorry, Scott Brown trying to uh, free foot down, down the left-hand side. A little too much on it, but uh, a nice idea nonetheless. Reggie Brown, not a big guy <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. A lot of skill in his feet, though. That's what counts. That's a spinner that comes across the midfield stripe and steered on out of there for the Quakers by Goodwin. Foot plays back behind. They didn't see Spangler back there, so now they've got to come to this near side for Lehman. Boggs tried to lay the head on it, and you've got a whistle. Looks like Smoke uh, being called for the foul the front there on Blessy. Here again, uh, maybe it was a handball. Let's we'll check this out here. Oh! Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Ah, uh, what the camera can pick up that the naked eye can't. Played way ahead, and Lehman, who's had a great first half, takes it back to the middle. Now Smoke got it settled down for Boggs, and they're going to play up ahead for foot. Nice ball as he takes to the sideline. Off by the touchline on the far side. Now trying to come back toward the middle to get a rush going. He goes across the field for Boggs, and a nice play made across the... The Sal defensive set as they steer it on out of there. Zegostowski was the guy who made the defensive play along that back line. That was a nice tackle by Zegostowski. Another one there, a little bit of a late hit from uh, LaSalle, it's defender. Under nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. Neither team has scored. 
LaSalle has had six corner kicks here in the first half. Penn, none. Oh, Scott, I'm sorry, the thing to keep an eye on, there's foot. They have to get the ball, and not to be facetious, to, to Brian Foote's foot, his feet, and Boggs is doing a good job of that. And when Foote's able to turn, he'll be able to play the ball up front to the front runners. He's having, having some success as of late, being able to turn and cross that ball all the way back to Boggs at the far post. That one took you a little while, didn't it? Long way to Tipperary. And then, by the way, this is a pretty long field. I'd say it's about 115 yards long, but not, as we mentioned earlier, not very wide. But some very good soccer being played nonetheless. And there's a wide shot of it, actually, uh, lengthwise. And uh, I'd say it's probably about 65, 68 feet wide, yards wide. And Tui just going over the back of his defender. You want to see aggressive? That's aggressive. Bill Blussey was back there, and Tui didn't care. All right, there it is. And the ball won there by uh, Ted Lehman uh, of Penn. And here's the cross. This is what uh, Tui was trying to do earlier. Get off his line, catch that ball's highest point. And one of his own players paid for it that time, but that's the price when you uh, when you play inside that box. Who said he's not a football player? And across this near touch line, AC Lehman. Steered back behind. Once again, the pace of the game kind of settled down a little bit. Each team, despite the fact that we haven't seen a score yet, has had some scoring chances. Goodwin has it taken away, and the throw-in is going to belong to the Quakers and Mike Healy. Join the Comcast Network for Comcast Newsmakers. It's your call, live each Monday evening at 6.30. Join Lynn Doyle when she takes your calls for the area's top newsmakers. Comcast Network, we're covering the local scene like never before. Game continues with a little bit over seven minutes left in the half. Let it run, let it run, let it run. And once again, Hughes with the head. Go, Over. On the near side, Hughes going to go after it with the head again. This time, a lot of Quakers back there as Copeland will try to start him now from the back line. He set it out there nicely. For, unfortunately for him, no one was out there. Ralph Mayer working along that back line with Lehman. And now it is stout along the back line for LaSalle. Spangler tried to push ahead. He and Lehman collide. A, a little bit of a uh, physical game back there with Spangler going up against the Penn defenders. Seems to be contact every time. Uh, he's very dangerous. He's quick on a turn. They don't want to allow him to start dribbling as, the, as they do with Calasante. So they're meeting him with a, a strong physical challenge every time. Nothing dirty, part of the game. I think it might also be a little bit of, hey, freshman, here's your first game. This is what college soccer feels That's like. part of it, too. Kawasante, great job just to stay on his feet. Flag goes up. Penn was looking for a call that they weren't going to get. we got a corner coming. Here again, we're going to see the challenge there. And uh, bing bong off of Lehman's head. Spangler to Lehman. Lehman, uh, Pretty much uh, like a Sam Peckinpah movie, they're just getting whacked. Good job. Seventh corner of the half for LaSalle. That leaves it out in front. Box steers it out. Here comes your shot into the box. O'Connor can't quite get it and then finally covers. Justin Seifert doing very well trying to poach there. We see Justin running back there for the LaSalle side. He had an earlier uh, a goal early in the season. Here again, Seifert trying to shield, but he Stabs at it a second time, and O'Connor, well, I don't know. That's a close one. Did he have possession or not? Referee is a little bit closer than we were. I don't think the official is going to say that he had possession on having the ball that quickly. Now Spangler. Copeland, these guys are not quite friends here today. Spangler, great move to get it free. Got the shot, and he missed over the top. Tremendous effort there by Spangler. Good first touch. He beat Copeland. Well, Connor had to make his move, and then, of course, we uh, saw the second defender coming in there to help. Here again, good first touch. O'Connor clearly beaten, and Spangler knocks it too far over the top, though. Here again, watch, good first touch with the right foot. Uses Copeland's uh, momentum going the other way to get around the other side of him. Here comes O'Connor to press, good pressure from O'Connor. And of course, uh, the defender there. You saw a good angle there of a great play by O'Connor because he knew that as soon as it went over his defender, he had to make the move from off the 
line, and that's exactly what he did. He was breaking as soon as that ball went over the shoulder of Copeland. Well, you're absolutely right there. As you see, I believe it's uh, Spengler again down, but Hughes doing very well. Here again, Spengler trying to get down the right-hand side, and a little bit of a late tackle there that time by Ralph Mayer. But also Hughes doing very well to help O'Connor out on that second clear uh, on that uh, try on goal. Just over 41 minutes into the match now. And that is our fourth helicopter pass. Are we in some sort of a jetway here? Well, we might have to check to see if someone else got cleared from the other team by the, the clearinghouse. They may be flying them in straight from Kansas, the NCAA or something. It's good thinking on your part. Played into the box. Opportunity for LaSalle. The field goal may be good, but the shot was not. Malasuski doing very well to step up and uh, take his chance there. The defender out of Bishop Eustis. Good first time hit. All he's got to do is keep it lower. And again, as I said, sometimes a little bit bumpy. Ball might have popped up on him. I've asked you before, you need some cooking tips? Yeah, I do, yes. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, let the chef, Paul Dillon, show you the way on Let's Cook. Thursday afternoon at 4.30, only on the Comcast Network. Actually, have a way on our internet site, site which we'll be telling you about a little bit later, where you can get some of Paul's recipes now. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Brown has it taken away as he tries to penetrate, and now it comes back to this near side. LaSalle once again on the run. Played ahead by Zygostowski. And now Spangler. Oh, he caught a shot in left ankle. And he is limping. And they are going to call a stop to play now with the whistle on the contact. Spangler really took a shot on the left ankle. Yep, Spangler paying the price of uh, being a forward there. And it's Lehman chasing him. And a uh, little bit of shoulder charge, though, from Spangler. Got away with it. I don't, I don't know if there was a shot there or not. But he was doing very well to clear. Out on that far side, Mike Keeley. Foot tried to lay the chest on it. Seven first half corners for LaSalle. None for the Quakers. And offsides is going to be the call as Spangler apparently was back too far. Well, clearly, uh, UPenn backed up. I have to say, uh, LaSalle probably has uh, pretty much the better of the possession. But Penn, early on, I'd say the first 20 minutes was definitely in the game, getting getting into the attacking third. They're having trouble establishing some kind of superiority, though, in the attacking third and holding the ball up there. Good anticipation by Tui as he came off the back line and made sure that Smoke couldn't come down with it. Off on the right side. You hear the conversation, the constant chatter going on on the field. Guys letting one another know where they are, where their defenders are. And Al Boggs plays it up. Smoke settled it down nicely. Not going to get the shot away, though. And a lot of pushing and shoving going on over there as Bill Blessy did a good job defensively on Smoke. Blessy did do a good job. Of course, Smoke, uh, not a bad idea. He probably has to do it just a little bit quicker. And, uh, of course, uh, Penn has taken uh, Blackwell and Cohen out of the front runner position. They have uh, two different forwards up there and uh, the flow seems to be breaking down a little bit for Penn up front. Touch back behind and that's not good news for O'Connor. He needs a little help back there. And he's finally steered out of the way by Austin Dang. And of course, uh, Chen is out of the game too right now for you, Penn, and that's gotta be uh, hurting the Penn's ability to win the ball and get forward quickly because he was doing a very good job uh, policing that midfield third. Dang played it up ahead. And now Brown gets cut down, but Penn's still an opportunity now with 14 seconds left in the half, and the trip from behind is probably going to put an end to that. Fox doing very well. Probably the best player at the field for Penn in the first half. You can see him with real quick feet going through two defenders and a little bit of click of the heels there. We're not in Oz anymore. We are, however, at halftime now here at McCarthy Stadium. A lot of end-to-end -end action. Still no score between the Penn Quakers and LaSalle Explorers. We'll be back with more here on the Comcast Network right after this. Every weekend there's lots of college football you want to see but can't. One solution, get cloned. 
Get yourselves tickets and hit the road. Here's a better game plan. ESPN Game Plan. Every weekend, great college football games from top conferences you can't normally see sent right to you. So subscribe now. The ESPN Game Plan. It can't be duplicated. Check Friday's USA Today for Saturday's Game Plan. I like warm places, like Philadelphia. Like the smiles I get for free when I'm antiquing along the nearby countryside. Warm. I'd love to take you for a stroll through New Hope or Peddler's Village. The cheesesteaks. Warm. It's okay, you'll walk it off later. Shopping. I'd love to take you shopping at the largest mall on the East Coast. Then there's warm daddies, okay? But there's nothing warmer than the hearts of the people in my Philadelphia. I love to show you where Van Gogh, Cezanne, Renoir, and Picasso live. I'd love to be with you when you explore Longwood Gardens. I'd love to take you to the Franklin Institute or the Police Touch Museum. I'm Bill Cosby, and that's my Philadelphia. If you love history, antiques, museums, nightlife, and gorgeous countryside, you'll love the place that loves you back. Call now, 1-888-GO-PHILA. Sure, there are people with just one side, but most people have quite a few. And because you have more sides, you connect with other people who do. Like the people at Comcast, for instance. We've got stuff for your active side, your serious side, your light side, and the dark side. Even great shows you can't see anywhere else. Because no matter what mood you're in, we're out to stay on your good side. Comcast, everything you connect with. Scoreless here at halftime at McCarthy Stadium between Penn and LaSalle. We've seen two teams that have had opportunities, but nobody has found the goal in the first 45 minutes of play. For the Penn Quakers, great opportunity came about midway through the first half, but once again, Don Tui, the goalkeeper, was up to the challenge. Jared Barks tries to sneak one here at the near post, but Tui's up to it. Here again, we see Brown serving one. And once again, it is Tui. You see the aggressive style. This time, he's going to fly him right over the back of Bill Blessy come down with a loose ball. Good mobility there for Tui. LaSalle had some chances as well. A little bit of a flurry in front of Penn goalkeeper Michael O'Connor. Well, right there, I think O'Connor did have possession, but I give uh, Seifer uh, credit for no quit in him. The, the stat that jumps out of me there is the fouls. 14 for Penn and uh, 8 uh, for LaSalle. Uh, Penn's had to foul them an awful lot to stop them tactically from uh, getting forward in their midfield, and LaSalle's uh, been pretty dominant in the box, but everything else... Uh, and of course, the corners, LaSalle uh, uh, dominating that thing, getting forward and dominating there, the attacking third. They've dominated a lot of areas of the field, but they have yet to score in this one. And while their goalkeeper keeps pitching shutouts, now 255 scoreless minutes this year. And Quakers hanging right in there. Scoreless at halftime. We're back with second half action in just a moment. Pay-per-view is proud to present a winning month of the best in filmmaking. Winner Best Actor, Jeffrey Rush in Shine. Winner Best Supporting Actor, Cuba Gooding Jr. in Jerry Maguire. Winner Best Adapted Screenplay, Sling Blade. Winner Best Documentary, When We Were Kings. Winner Best Song, You Must Love Me, from Evita. For the best entertainment the best way possible, the winner is Pay-Per-View. Next, Billy. I found all kinds of things on this totally cool new website called InTheGardenState.com. It's got all kinds of rad stuff about our area. You know, dining, travel, business. Like my mom used it to find a new job. Dad used it to get directions and a map. And my dorky sister uses it to find out what's on TV. And me, I go right to the sports. Whatever you do, don't tell anybody about it because you'll never get on your computer again. InTheGardenState.com. So simple, even an adult can use it. I get the feeling when I watch biography that I am getting the true story. The humanity of the show is what I really respect so much. It's a nice balance of humor and tragedy. I'm always amazed by the, the twists and the turns, things you didn't know about someone. Ten years of extraordinary lives. Happy anniversary, biography. a and &E thanks Comcast Cablevision for bringing you ten great years of biography. Hello everyone, I'm Bruce Beck, host of Comcast Sports Talk. Every Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. we're your home for sports banter. We bring you the personalities that shape the sports scene. 
with guests such as Walt Frazier, Pat Croce, Bobby Chez, and Harry Carson, we give you the opportunity to voice your opinions with comments and questions. So join us weeknights at 10 for Comcast Sports Talk, only on the Comcast Network. Getting ready for second half action now as the Penn Quakers have already taken the field. LaSalle just about to take the field. You know, Penn in a familiar role because last year in four of their first six games, they were shut out. This LaSalle team didn't get shut out much. But Penn was shut out four out of six to start things out last year and then ended up the season at 8-6-1, and one, their first winning season since 1984. Now there's Georgia O'Neill and company, the Dave Cardi and the Rigby have done a good job there uh, at UPenn. And, of course, uh, we see Spangler walking on the field. There's Spangler and Jeff Romo up front. But Calasante uh, trailing behind them. They've been very dangerous. I think uh, UPenn have to get back on their game by trying to get connected with their front runners. And uh, right now we see uh, Brian Foote. And, of course, uh, I believe that's uh, Cohen back in the game. Cohen who knocked in the winning goal against uh, Harvard on the right with the number 10. So that's important for UPenn. UPenn uh, pride themselves in playing some very good defense. And uh, they'll probably just keep trying to counter and see if they get a goal. And, uh, I, I look to see Calasante maybe getting more out to the flank or the wing area where he can find a little more space in the second half. Well, Penn will now be moving from our right to left here in this second half. And as we said, both goalkeepers have been impenetrable. In fact, both have yet to give up a goal here this year. And that shot of a rolling ball took out our field microphone, which was just placed in that spot. Uh, another substitution we see for Penn, uh, Bonder, David Bonder, in at the left side of midfield for University of Penn. As you see, uh, Mike O'Connor trying to get the ball upfield. And he does. Now to the middle of the field. Hughes plays, and now back is Lehman for Mayer. And across the field, here come the Quakers. A little bit of a handful of jersey, and Box is going to get whistled for it. So LaSalle will get an opportunity to set it down and give it a kick. Here again, we see tugging from behind there, Calasante trying to get away. And uh, he sees that kind of marking all year long. 8-10 uh, player of the year at one point. Philadelphia Soccer 7 uh, player of the year two years in a row. Uh, and again, like I said, you might, he may get a tryout in Europe somewhere when he's finished. Remarkably consistent player is Calasante. 18, 22, and 20 goals his first three years here. Two goals so far this year. Of course, everything hasn't been roses for him when he first got here. He came in with a broken foot his freshman year, medical red shirt. There goes Boggs. Boggs, with a little bit of a head of steam, does get it in on Tui without much gas on it. And Tui takes it down. And a shot of Carlos Dante walking back. As I mentioned earlier, you, know, you probably should see him in the MLS next year, Major League Soccer. Again, doing very well on the international stage, uh, assisting on that goal over the Ukraine in the university games this summer. Tui with a big ball ahead to Jeff Ramo. He tried to play back, and that's going to come over the touchline. Last touch pen, so LaSalle on the throw in. Once again, there's Spangler. And LaSalle again will keep. Opening minutes of play, second half and scoreless. Thrown into the box, still alive, and steered on out of there by Goodwin. There's Foot playing off for Boggs on the far side, and Boggs just gonna play it down the field. Uh, Boggs does the right thing there just to take the pressure off the defense. Uh, Mike O'Connor a little bit late getting off his line there. To a way out of the goal. Uh, Pat Farrell, the coach of uh, LaSalle, assisted by Jim Coleman and uh, Bobby Wilkinson, doing a very good job to get the ball down on the ground and switch the point of attack well. and. Uh, I'm sure telling the players to shoot a lot more in the second half. Join host Mick Moninghoff of the area's hottest high school sports magazine show, Scholastic Sports Weekly, Thursday morning at 10.30, only on the Comcast Network. Laid down the side. Cohen trying for the center. Got it across. Foot couldn't quite control, and it was knocked on out of there by Stout. Go ahead, A little back and forth action in the midfield area. And Hughes finally gets it under control. All six foot six of him. It's a big guy for soccer. Yeah, Goodwin doing a very good job uh, controlling the ball with his feet at that height. Mayer took it to the middle. 
And now up the near side, Bonder fighting for it. Is there going to be the save? There is. Nice play made for LaSalle by Welke. Bonder tried to play back toward the middle. Now Colasante showing some of that fancy footwork he's famous for. Gets the throw. Dang just got a piece of it. Now Spangler tried to get it toward the middle. Play once again in the middle of the field. Now Goodwin. A lot of action going on in the middle of the field right now. Well, the one adjustment uh, George O'Neill did that I'm um, sure he's trying to hope will pay dividends. He's pushing nine foot all the way up front as a forward. And it's important that Boggs starts to connect with him. LaSalle wanted to get it in Penn Will. They say it last touch LaSalle before going over the touch line. There's George O'Neill. George O'Neill, a member of the Philadelphia Adams midfield, uh, who uh, he played aside, lo alongside a man for Chelsea, the head coach of Seton Hall right now. And of course, Barry Barto, Philadelphia uh, star, who uh, ended up play, uh, coaching the UNLV. And he's in the sports season, there, as you see, 25, 35, and 3. Brown into the game, just tried to get it into the box. And now Spangler trying to get ahead of the pack. Got a little bit of room to maneuver out here. He hasn't had much of that kind of room today. Nice move back to the middle. Two men on him. Then got the one foot in. Now here's your servant of the box. But Brown is back, and he clears it. Onside, an opportunity now for the Quakers to counter. Here comes Cohen. Got it up over the top, and he missed it to the left. Oh, tremendous play, counterattack. Two passes forward. Cohen just hits it before the defender's about to hit him. It just goes wide of the post by about four or five yards, but from that distance, not up. A very good idea. He gets a good touch on it. Bounces a little bit here in front of him. And O'Connor doing well to charge him. He's, it looked like a shootout in the MLS. Here again, you see it bouncing a little bit, but he did the right thing. Tried to chip it and beat O'Connor, but it's just wide. And, of course, Dang doing very good defending at the other end to start that. Baker's trying to keep a little pressure on. Brown, who had that big ball out of his box that set up Cohen, now working the far sideline into the middle. And Tui going to cover it. Not a bad idea there from Brown. Uh, he really didn't have much room. Try to chip it. We see Pat Farrell, good defender in his own right, in his own right, in, in his time. And uh, so we assistant coach there. I believe that's his son. Looking for win number 100 in his LaSalle career today. Challenge won by Dang, and now Hughes. Colasante settles it, but Lehman right there to take it over the touchline. Off the throw in. Penn still trying to make something happen. And it last touched Schwartz before it went over the end line, so it's a goal kick. Comcast and CNN Headline News continue to team up to bring you Comcast Newsmakers. Join host Lynn Doyle for her discussions with the area's headline makers, including your local, regional, and state officials. Comcast Newsmakers each 25 and 55 minutes past the hour, only on CNN Headline News. Play at the middle of the field, Dang comes up and gets a touch on it. Now Goodwin pushing it ahead. Brown can't quite cover that kind of ground, though, coming in from the right wing, and Tui's got it. That's right, not a bad idea. Goodwin would have to put a bend on that, sort of bent outside on a curve, uh, so Brown could have run onto it. But uh, Brown giving a little more uh, to the midfield. He's uh, trying to settle the team down. They tried to switch the point of attack all the way to, to the opposite defender, Dang, on the other side. They couldn't get out, but uh, here's a killer pass. Colasante is going to get a shot at it, and he got it. Colasante, from a tough angle with the left foot, came across the mouth of the goal and beat Michael O'Connor high into the right side. It's 1-0 LaSalle. Well, that killer pass turned into a killer goal. As you can see how dangerous the glider, the magician, Colasante, as CC takes off behind the outside defender. Here he just hits it first time. Left foot, upper right-hand corner, and beats O'Connor at the far post. Here again. Very marksman like <laughs> marksmanship, a big time marksmanship there. It's fumbling with the words, but that, as you can see, he's deadly when it comes to being accurate. 
And so the goal comes. Now the Quakers trailing by a 1-0 score. Trying to put the pressure on, and they're going to get their first corner of the day. Well, Penn's going to have to push forward a little more now and come out of their defensive uh, shell, and hopefully for you, Penn's sake, they'll be able to control the midfield a little more. Played up top, two he can't quite control, but he waves everybody out of the way and says he'll take it. That's a courageous challenge there from David Bonder to go up against, as they call him, the linebacker there, Tui. The ball bounced around a little bit, and that's uh, what it's gonna take for Penn to score. Good first time ball here, and again, it's anybody's ball right here, and David Bonder who came out at half, decided to challenge. Played up to the middle of the field now, and contact there between Colasante and Lehman means that LaSalle's gonna get to set it down and give it a kick. 53rd minute of the game, of the match. Colasante with the left foot has broken the scoreless tie. LaSalle trying to keep the pressure on. Spangler got a touch on it, but the Penn defense was right there. Fight for it. Cohen trying to get something done. A lot of pushing and shoving going on. And the call is going to go against Cohen and the Quakers. Randy Melisuski being taken down there that time by Cohen. Melisuski doing well to shield the ball. Battle goes on here. A little bit of shirt pulling, I don't know. That could have that could, went either way. He's got the, the ref's got to call that a little quicker there if you get to try and get the first call. Because at a certain point, they were just bumping each other. Played down toward the end line. Hughes trying to steer it out of there. And he does. Well, Sal moving up with a little bit of pressure now. Lehman cleared it. Brown pushes ahead to Cohen up near midfield. He'll come across the field. Bonder got the header. And play continu continuing in the midfield area. As a touch was there for Schwartz, but a whistle came before the kick. Sigatowski being fouled on that. The freshman, you see a Spangler jogging back there. So look at Schwartz out of South Orange, New Jersey at Columbia High School. Sal plays on, trying to keep the pressure on. Colasante playing back toward the middle, cleared away by Goodwin. Stout once again trying to get it into the box. And the pressure stays on for the Explorers. Spangler got a shot at a diving save made by O'Connor. Spangler with a side volley, doing very well to hit that O'Connor equally well up to the test. Diving to his left and pulling that one in. Here again, we're going to see Spangler. No fooling around. First time volley. O'Connor, that's a tough one to stop because it skipped right before it came up at him. Another look at it. Sidewinding kick. And O'Connor, diving off to his left, comes up with it. But the pressure continues for the Explorers. Spangler bringing it in now. And now Brown tries to clear. Got it out to Cohen. He crosses it. Sal defense gets back. Well, you can see Penn trying to get some kind of uh, pattern uh, as we see Dang who cleared the ball out. He's doing a good job. He came in for Chen early on, but uh, Brown trying to get the ball early up to Cohen, and Cohen switching the point of attack to the far side, but that's being cut off by an ever alert LaSalle defending. Each week, uh, I will tell you about that in a second. Fight is on on the sideline. Oh, boy, what a fight that's on on the sideline. Both players say, no, not me, because the official was standing right there with him. Now it'll give and go or no. Colasante got to take it himself. Got it into the box, and it's cleared up out of the way. There's your play back toward the middle. Goodwin playing it for Bonder. Bonder across, wanted to find Brown or Foot. Both were there, but it led them just a little bit too much. And now Spangler. Good play made by Deng. Spangler continues to control in the midfield area. Now Colasanto. He and Spangler together are dangerous, and that's Colasanto to Spangler. Both guys can handle it well. Spangler just lost it across the touchline, and Penn throws in. Here we get a nice ball down here as uh, the battle goes on with Jeff Romeo and Hughes. Bonder and Jeff Romeo, no quitting him. Both of them looked at the official and said, hey, where's the call? Hey, not me. 
Coming up on 32 minutes left in the match, LaSalle with a one to nothing lead. Each weeknight at 11, join Steve Adubato for one-on-one -on -one and meet the area's most important public officials, entertainers, authors, and more. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato, weeknights at 11. As we see uh, O'Connor getting ready to uh, take this goal kick, uh, keep in mind Calasante starting to get some room now. He's starting to, to turn on his defender and he's starting to distribute some through balls to his other front runners, Spangler, Zagatowski coming through sometimes. Penn still counting on Cohen to make something happen by himself over there. And as he was near the touchline, he went out. LaSalle gets the throw in. I'll tell you what, Cohen's getting tired. Yes, he is. And I think Spangler is too. Spangler uh, on the LaSalle side doing some very good dribbling, but uh, uh, not, not up to snuff. As you can see, uh, a couple of plays back, he just dribbled out of bounds. So yeah, it's a warm day. Little fancy passing along the sideline for the Explorers. Nicely handled, but taken away by Penn. And now back to the middle of the field. Wolke trying to work it over to that far side, Calasanto. He'll come back near side. That's Blessy. Got the cross there. O'Connor's going to challenge. It's headed out of the way. O'Connor's out of the goal mouth. That's a big ball won by O'Connor there. He's getting the top of the 18, saying, don't come into this area. And uh, Penn's not finished yet. And it's knocked out. There's a look at Colasanti. Colasanti uh, pulling himself a little bit further back even into the midfield. And now we see he was a Delaware Gatorade player of the year in 92. But this is where he's so dangerous in international competition too. He's not just a finisher. He's a very good passer. Understands the game really well. Like that pass right there. Pride of Silesianum High School down in Wilmington. Of course, the trivia question would be, what's the connection there? I was the one-time play-by-play voice on the radio of Silesianum High School. How about that? Yep. But it was one of the elements on the chart there. Foot had it go through. And after a brief thought about playing it back, it's played out ahead by Stout. Back into the box, and Tui, <laughs> aggressive as aggressive can be, comes out and gets it. Here again, you see the ball being played in there. And uh, this is a good ball won by Copeland, fair and square there. Some very good defending. And that's the one thing that the Penn team is been doing well except for that goal that Colasante put in. Now Penn's recent number 21 ranking in the country is on the line right now. Colasante. Now you see Colasante is, is really comfortable either turned and faced the goal or with his back to the goal and that's a sign of a, a potential professional there. Dang came in a little late and took Spangler down to the ground. And Spangler's going to be wearing a couple of the marks of his first collegiate game today. Wow. Tough tackle from behind there. Spangler wise to uh, kind of go with it so his ankles didn't get cracked. And now back they go to the middle of the field. Graham Walker for Spangler. And now Walker's going to get the volley into the box. And O'Connor out there just in front of a charging Jefferno. Well, Walker doing very well with that chip, but O'Connor reading that. Seeing that what his attention was. There's Cohen. Oh, he's got somebody right there. It's Bonner. Bonner for the top. Blast. And he missed off the top of the crossbar. Cohen doing everything to set that goal up. He drew two defenders. The great sign of a target player drawing the defenders and knocking that ball of Bonner. Not messing around, Bonner, as you can see. Doesn't take another touch. He hits it first time. And clearly, Tui beaten that time. And he has the crossbar to thank for that one. Here again, Bonder, first time, keeps it real low. Well, not real low, but not low enough, obviously. But uh, Bonder knowing that he was open and uh, not hesitating. Penn's best scoring opportunity to date. Had a great shot at it there, and it caught the crossbar. 27-45 and counting left here in the match. Colasanti's goal in the 53rd minute is the difference now with LaSalle up 1-0. Banger with the challenge, he won it. And here come the Explorers trying to come back the other way. Colasanti. Playing back behind. That's Tim Walton. Walton plays ahead and we've got a whistle. Gonna be against Penn. And there have been a lot of whistles against Penn today. Yes, I don't, I don't think uh, Copeland should have went in for that foul and kept La LaSalle in front of them 
now they have a set piece there, and of course, uh, Stout's going to take it. He's pretty dangerous with these things. Stout with the play. Into the box. Walton can't quite get there. Contact, but the official says play on. I believe we had an offsides call there that the linesman's flag went up. We got more Major League Baseball Thursday night live at 8.30. Ken Griffey Jr. and the Seattle Mariners at the Texas Rangers here on the Comcast Network. Our network has caught a lot of the Seattle Mariners this year. And now that they've opened up some room in the American League West and are going to the playoffs, interesting and dangerous team to watch if they get Randy Johnson back healthy. Play back to the middle of the field now. That's Dang. As it knocked away into the bleachers on the far side. So the throw in now for Pennsylvania. Well, of course, on that last uh, that shot where uh, Penn almost scored, it's not surprising. They tried to the counter. They finally got the ball switched from one side of the field to the other. And Cohen wisely knocked that ball right back into the middle of this bonder. Here they come again. Copeland now sees an opportunity into the middle and Cohen can't quite get up the ladder enough to get the head on it. Walton just going to steer it over the end line as Penn's going to get the corner kick. Good hustle by Bonder there as you see him number 16 there. And uh, of course uh, that time as we see the ball come across from Copeland, I believe that was Eubner. Probably should have done a lot better with that one there because he was wide open. Of course screen for a second but uh, he had the whole goal to shoot at, shoot at right in front of him. So now Steve Cohen with the corner. Third of the game for the Quakers. Not much happening off of it. Sal thinking about attacking back the other way. Check it. Make that just the second corner of the game for the Quakers. And now Hughes. Put it in the exact middle of the field. Not a two week coming out. Sorry, not a bad idea as that ball was knocked a foot. It was just a, I don't want to say it, but a foot off from Brian. Just missed that, but he's looking to flick that on over to we as we see him. Going for the territorial advantage. That one goes way upfield into the midfield. Copeland onto it. Now Foot gonna play up the near sideline. He's got Moreland there. Make that Copeland there. Copeland coming in, going to get the cross out of this, and does. Tui got the hand on it and knocked it up over the crossbar. Copeland and uh, UPenn, they, they keep trying to test Tui at the near post. Couldn't hold on to it, but it went over the top. And, of course, Brian Foote putting that through ball right here to Copeland. Good first touch. Left foot to drive right to the near post. And, again, Tui does well to knock it over the top, but he couldn't hold on to it. So now this is the third corner for the Quakers. Cohen setting it up, set it way deep on the back post. Header. And it won't go, still alive and a score. Quakers there for the rebound. And credit the goal, I believe, to Lehman, who stepped in on the rebound and rammed it home with 23.47 to go, and we're tied. Well, Lehman doing very well there, not, not to freak out, to keep his composure. A good cross, and we'll try and get the, the number and the name of the initial header. Tui unable to hold on to it again, and he paid for it. Here it comes. That ball headed down really tough by... Uh, that attacker from uh, Penn there. You can see everybody jumping around there. There again, well-timed run. Kept that space alive. And again, that was Lehman who, who followed up his uh, initial head ball down into Tui's hands, and he followed it right up. Follow your shot. And there's a happy Theodore Lehman tying the game up. I'm going to imagine he preferred Ted. <laughs> Nonetheless, right now, I don't think he cares what we call him. He just tied this game up. <laughs> you can call me Ray. You can call me Theodore. Al Bonner trying to race to keep it alive, but can't. And it'll be the goal kick for LaSalle. Colasanti had the goal in the 53rd minute. That came in the 67th for Lehman. And we're tied at one. There's Tui, uh, the linebacker, uh, unfortunately, Krim, not able to hold on to that ball there. Uh, possibly if he had time enough to parry that over the top or punch it. But that ball came in really at point blank range. Lehman really up, up in the air, knocking that one down. Challenge, one in midfield by the Quakers. They try to keep the pressure on his bonder. Back to Hubner. And now Dang can't quite catch up with it over the touchline. So LaSalle will come back down. I'm impressed with Dang. He's really covering a lot of territory there for Penn, as well as uh, Copeland and Hughes in the back. There's Hughes knocking the ball out of bounds. 
Hughes, the big defender, now sees it coming his way. And right there to lay the head on it. Colasanti. Up at the top of the 18, there's a shot. Knocked away, Colasanti got the rebound with the score. He picked it out of the air on the first touch. O'Connor took the blast with the left hand and knocked it away, but Colasanti, his second of the game, and it makes it a 2-1 LaSalle lead. Colasanti started that whole playoff here again, and Jeff Ramo takes a shot of the lead. Mike O'Connor getting well down to save here. Unfortunately, defender couldn't get there on time, and Colasante making no, no mistake about it. Here again, you can see the shot comes. O'Connor really does well to save this. This one's got to be cleared by a defender, unfortunately, uh, for Penn, but fortunately for LaSalle, Colasante just with the side of the foot, doesn't try to drill it, just deposit it in the back of the goal. That's why he's a great player. Up ahead, Hubner, and coming out to get it was Tui. Tui with a big charge, an aggressive charge, out toward the top of the box. And I'll tell you what, after not seeing any scoring in the first half, we've seen our share of it here with LaSalle leading it by a 2-1 score. Quakers nodded it. And then less than a minute and a half later, LaSalle took the lead back again. Well, as I mentioned uh, at the halftime, that Colasanti might get out to the wing a little bit more, but uh, we got a corner kick here coming up for UPenn, but um, here he is, Colasante, coming back. He plays uh, defense as well. This guy's a total soccer player. Finding a lot of space in the midfield and playing some good combination passes to his front runners. Taking the pressure off himself, and there he goes. He sneaks one in. One is a bandit, one is a marksman. Cohen now with the corner. Trying back post. Sailed it a little bit too much. And now Copeland tries to take it back to the middle, and guess who's there? Colasante to get it out of the box. Now pushing ahead, Dang going straight back. He would do well to play it back to the keeper, and that's what he'll do. Now Mike O'Connor pitched five shutouts last year, got a shutout in the opener this year against Harvard, but had not run into Cicidio Colasanti. Welke playing it up to the far side. And now Goodwin trying to find foot on the far side. It goes over the touchline. Want, want to keep pace with the Comcast Network? Do it on the web, www.comcastnetwork.com. You'll get schedules, show topics. We even told you you'll get those recipes, hot news, and more. That's our website. Good website, too. www.comcastnetwork.com. Of course, Dave Cerrotti, the guy at our network who is in charge of keeping that thing moving, keeping all kinds of information fresh. He does a good job of it. Fight for the ball at midfield. Good defending there between you and uh, Jeffermo and uh, Bolton. And that's been a good matchup all day long, watching those two guys go at it. Just doing Dane LaSalle leading by score to 2-1. Colasanti with two goals. And Lehman scoring for UPenn. And once again, we've got a whistle. This time it's going back up the other way. As we mentioned before, an astounding number of whistles against Penn. 21 of them in all today. Well, they're uh, noted for the defense. And again, George O'Neill played for one of the best club teams in the world, Glasgow Celtic, and of course represented the United States. They're, they're going to come out and play some hard-nosed defense. Uh, being, being a Scotsman, uh, naturalized American citizen, that's one of his uh, strong areas. Of course, uh, like I mentioned before, LaSalle, uh, Pat. Pat Farrell doing a very good job having them defend and get forward with the likes of Colasanti showing some magic with his feet there. And now once again, the kick over the touchline is going to send Penn back moving. They've got 19-15 to try to get the equalizer and perhaps win. And uh, to, to LaSalle's credit, you can see Spangler shielding the ball. This is what LaSalle's done very well today. And the support's got to come a little quicker. Spangler holding on to the ball as the refs just oh. play on. And that time he intentionally grabbed it with his hand as he was down on the ground. And you can hear in the background uh, Pat Farrell telling him to play quicker. He draws two defenders. All right, your job's done. And he uh, loses the ball. Some shirt pulling. And uh, he grabbed for the ball right after that. He actually reached for it with his hand. A couple of pretty simple rules to follow in this sport. And one of them is you can't do that. Good one trying to play it into the box. And now Spengler nicely played up ahead. Hughes playing off for Dang. And 
In the middle of the field, Colasanti plays ahead. Driving ahead, Colasanti in a foot race with O'Connor. He kept it alive. But Brad Copeland right there to help his keeper out. I can't tell from the angle we were on if that was a legal shoulder charge or he took him down, but uh, Colasanti's okay. But the, some real tremendous action there in that attacking third going on. Spangler back to the middle. And now pushed ahead. Knocked out by Stout. Once again, it's Hughes. Hughes, one of his deepest penetrations of the day with the ball. There's your drive shot for Cohen, but it just missed. He couldn't quite lay the foot on it. Bonder knocking off a nice ball for Hughes. Unfortunately for Hughes, he couldn't, couldn't get the shot off quick enough, and he drew about three defenders on him that time. Now it's foot. They get it down right side. Got the cross in on Tui. Good job right there on the near post. On that early serve is uh, giving Tui some trouble. Here again, we see Kalasani breaking in, and there's Copeland. And uh, I don't see any foul there. No, let's just play on. As I said, Copeland there to help his keeper. Good collective defending there, Scott. Copeland coming back to help out O'Connor. Sliding it ahead now. There's a foot race for it. And Deng got there to clear it out of the way before Jeffernow could do anything with it. There's Foot. Pushing it ahead into the box, and Tui once again comes out to get it off his line. 16 and a half left, and Tui and LaSalle holding on to a 2-1 lead. It's again the big punt. That's going to send Brad Copeland back to get it. Now here come the Quakers with Mayer. A lot of room there to operate for Mayer. And he comes back to this near sideline for Goodwin. Something happening now for Penn. Goodwin with a cross into the box and knocked away. And Spangler clears it out of the way. Play was made in the box by Tim Walton. I believe. And now up on that far side, the whistle blows. There's Jeffermo uh, shielding the ball well and looking to ball over Hughes. I don't know uh, if he slipped or he was taken down. I can't tell. It looked like he slipped. But set piece here. Played in and back out again. Colasanti. Now Spangler going to get the drive. Not much on it. And O'Connor takes it with his foot and parries it out of the way. Coming up on 15 minutes left. Hubner tried to play it ahead and did get the touch, but Cohen didn't have much help back there. And it'll come all the way back to this near side for Goodwin. Now Mayer for Hughes. Drive for Hughes, knocked away by Stout. And a counter now for the Explorers. Here they come. Welke trying to play down toward the corner, and it's steered away by Dane to keep Colasanti from getting dangerous over in the box. Colasanti not allowed to turn, turn that time. Good job by Dang. You see uh, Colasanti wanting to turn and uh, start to do some of his magic and uh, take some people on, but uh, that's the secret to shut him down. But obviously, he's uh, got two goals today. They're having a hard time trying to do that. Walton coming back in, replacing Suzak. And now in the box. Shot and a score! Jefferno hitting from the right side. It didn't look as though Michael O'Connor saw it until it was much too late and already by him. And the Explorers now have a two goal lead. Jefferno shielding the ball there and breaking a tackle at the near post, shooting to the far post. O'Connor had him, uh, I think, had it covered the near post. But here, Dang has to keep him uh, from turning there. And somehow he falls down. Hughes knocks it off at Dang. Dang, and it comes back. And O'Connor is just sort of like helpless there, doing his best at the near post. Here again, Dang defending fairly well here, not allowing the turn, but then he gets through the balls, deflected off for Dang, and first time hit from Jeffermo. Real smart thinking there to hit it to the far post, and there's a happy camper right there. His second goal of the season. 
for the sophomore out of Newtown, Pennsylvania, Council Rock. And now a little bit of breathing room for the Explorers as you take a look at Jefferno. Played up ahead and steered out of the way up into the stands by Stout. Well, Jeff Ramo and Spangler are doing a good job as the two forwards today uh, for LaSalle. And of course, uh, Calasante playing behind them, feeding them and uh, getting the ball back and then taking people on. And that's a tough combination to uh, shut down. Cohen tries to settle it. It went right between the legs of foot. And now Calasante taking ahead. They're yelling for him to serve it, so he will. And Jeff Rameau gets it under control on the far side of the box. Now back behind and knocked out of the way by Copeland right before an opportunity would have been there for Spangler. Copeland doing very well to step up to shut that down. And as you could uh, see the Calasante, someone actually ordered him from the sideline to serve it. And it was a great ball right to Jeff Rameau. Played back behind. Explorers still aggressive at this point despite the fact that they have a two-goal lead. And as it went over the end line, this is going to be corner kick time for LaSalle. I believe they're first here in the second half, and they're eighth of the game. Played out to the trailer, and knocked in through the box, as Welke knocked it away. Went over the end line and a goal kick coming for the Penn Quakers. Saturday, the Comcast Network has a day-night college football doubleheader. First live at noon, it's Maine at Villanova, then an Atlantic 10 affair. Then at 8, same-day coverage of the Ivy League opener, Dartmouth at Penn. I'll be there along with Bruce Harper at Franklin Field for that one. Saturday, doubleheader action only here on the Comcast Network. Carlos Santi has a crowd around him now as Healy plays to the near side for Copeland. Brad Copeland on the move at midfield. Goodwin. Down Cohen. Little give and go with Goodwin. Up at the top, drive, and the save made by Tui. Sprawling to his left. He just got a finger on it and steered it around the post. That was a real good save by Tui there. He's two or three steps off his line. The hard work, he missed the consistency here. Goodwin coming forward. Starting all 49 games in three years, and there's Tui oh. pushing that ball, parrying it wide to the post, and there again, a good touch to push it wide to the post, but Goodwin striking a very good shot here. Corner from the back, the header, Lehman missed on it, took it all the way back over to the side, and now Cohen will go to work again. That's Smoke. Back to the middle of the field. Touchdown once by Bonder, can't settle it down. Goodwin, another drive, and he scores! Off the hand of Tui, it was leaning one way. Goodwin with the drive from outside the box. And the scoring flurry continues as Penn is now within a goal again. Well, Goodwin really working hard again, getting a second shot off and within a span of minutes and doing very well. Tui unable to hold on to that. Again, Jason Smoke with a good serve. Bonder laid off a tremendous ball at the top of the 18. And there's the hit as it goes to the near post until we can't hold on to it. After one spectacular save a couple of moments ago on a good win drive, he couldn't quite keep up with that one. Nicely placed. And good win, uh, one of the captains uh, leading Penn back into this game. Now we told you how much time Penn had to try to get the equalizer. Now they're within that one. And we still have 10 minutes and 14 seconds to go. So very good. Uh, Team play in the box that time from Penn and Lehman. Lehman doing very well to far post. He got up on a header on that. And uh, the pressure was just kept on by you, Penn. They kept pounding the ball into that 18 uh, yard box. In a little less than 13 minutes, we've seen four goals after it took us into the 53rd minute to see our first. Copeland trying to keep the pressure on his Penn's got a little momentum now. Into the middle, and you got a whistle in the box. And that's going to be a foul on Penn in the box. As you can see the fight for position was on inside. I believe they blew the whistle on either foot or Bonder. Yeah, here again we see uh, Copeland uh, getting that cross off. And it uh, looks like Bonder dropped the, 
a LaSalle defender from behind. Not a, not a good time to do it. There you see the fouls. Penn with 23 of them. Three-two game as Tui plays out to the midfield area. Just over nine minutes to go. Back to the middle of the field. Who's going to want it? And Lehman with the head took it away from Colasanti. Lasalle will be happy to keep it right in the middle of the field right now. Couple little momentum shifts here in the second half. It went out by a touching pen. So the throw-in will belong to the Explorers. Absolutely right. This is what makes a good soccer game. The momentum uh, changes from time to time. Uh, so the, some of the teams get a siege as if they're trying to get into a castle there to keep crossing the ball into the box. And uh, this is what makes it very, very competitive. There's Goodwin, who just had his goal, sliding ahead for Cohen. And now Lehman. Pushing it out front, Tui on the run, off the line and grabbing it in the box. Tui with a big kick to the middle of the field. Jefferno tackled there by Copeland. The official says there was a little bit of a push that went along with it. There again, Jefferno trying to throw a move there and <laughs> Defender just taking his feet out from underneath him. So now LaSalle gets to set it with seven and a half minutes to go, leading it by one. Played in. Stout got it on the head of the guy in the box. Jeffermo had another opportunity there. Couldn't quite got it the right way, and O'Connor brings it out. That one slides through. Lehman just has to fight to keep it alive. And Colasanti knocks it over the stripe. So the throw in for Penn. They'll play it back. Under seven minutes left. Tom Hughes playing it in. Tried to get it to foot. Couldn't do it. Once again, it was Welke who got there. There you see Goodwin. They tell him to settle. They tell him to bring it back to the middle. Bonder, one touch into the box. And nobody there is Healy. Was locked up and engaged at that point with Zegatowski. Good pressure from Healy there. Two, two challenges in a row, and they got the ball back. And steered right out of the way by Welke. Copeland on the throw into Smoke. Smoke a little sloppy with the ball, and it's taken away. And down to the other end comes Blessy. Smoker to try to catch him from behind. Blessy, a good stop, takes it back to the middle. A lot of room there for Colasanti to operate. Pretty move as he took to the top. Now set up Spangler. One touch in the shot, but he couldn't get enough mustard on it, and O'Connor there to pick it up. Colasanti doing very well there, very selfless player there, knocking the ball back to Spangler. Some, some very good moves, faking as if he was going to dribble, and then laying the ball off. Foot getting it off to Healy, and now the return pass to Foot. Jumping over the defender, keeping the ball alive, keeping his dribble. Got the cross, the shot, and the score for Bonder. What a play from the right side. Brian Foot kept the dribble alive and found a crossing Bonder, who tapped it in with 5.29 to go, and suddenly we are tied. Bonder doing very well here, and here's Foot. He's pretty much kept him alive in the second half, as Boggs did in the first half. Early ball to the near post. They seem to be finding space there. Nice first touch to the far post by Bonder. Bonder started slow in the second half, but he's come on. And again, good diagonal run here. First time about on the four-yard line. And we have a 3-3 three, three ball game here, Scott. Six goals. And with uh, five minutes and 29 seconds left in the game, we're into the midnight hour, the witching hour, if you will, because uh, every ball is going to be contested now in these waning minutes. Still can't get over the fact that it took us 50 into the 53rd minute of the match to get a score. And then since that time, over the last 18 minutes, we have seen five goals. When it rains, it pours. Colasanti getting two, and Jeffermo for LaSalle, and of course, uh, Goodwin, Bonder. 
And who's the player that I left out there for uh, Penn? Reed Goodwin. Goodwin, the captain, one of the captains. What a nice cannon. That is Goodwin right there. Now momentum going neither way. Five minutes to score. If not, we're looking at overtime. And it goes over the side. The Emmy-nominated Comcast Network sports team turns its sights on high school football next Saturday afternoon at 4.30. It's Snyder at Ferris. Then that night at 11.30, Point Pleasant Beach in Freehold Borough. The Comcast Network has high school football. High school football never had it so good. Tui with the play in the box. Some good defending there by Stout to keep Cohen out. And there's Tui. Big kick up across the midfield strike. And now Healy wants to try to settle it. 4.25 left. So we pretty have pretty much of a contrast to styles here today. And again, we talked about U Penn. We'll see George O'Neill making some subs there. But U Penn pretty much playing a counterattack uh, game, becoming dangerous in the second half in the box. And of course, LaSalle knocking the ball around, playing a little more possession on the ground. But nonetheless, just as dangerous in the box. A lot of the sh shooting from the outside. And of course, uh, Colasante doing some, uh, some real scheming in the midfield. We just saw a couple of moments ago, Jason Carajorge just came into the game for Penn. Under four minutes left, the LaSalle throw in. Or is it going to be a kick? It's going to be a kick. Whistle and a foul called on Penn again. Now here you go, trying to settle it down. The Explorers up on the top, steered out of the way. Cram Walker with that initial flick on there for LaSalle. Brown steers, and now Goodwin's got a great opportunity for a counter. Got people with him. Bonner leaving it back behind. Goodwin tries to steer it up his side. And now going for Lehman. Penn's got good spacing on the field as Lehman carries in, but a good defensive play strips him. 3.07 to go. And Lehman's got to play that ball, and as he tries to reprieve himself, to reprieve, he's got to play that ball, and I get a shot off because he only started a counter. Healy pushing ahead. Brown trying to give chase. Unless he tried to clear it, but he hit it off his own teammate. Fight is on down there, and Brown took it away. Brown saying, where is everybody? There's your drive from Cohen, and the shot stopped by Tui. Bonder again, there Tui getting off his line, and uh, Brown uh, really uh, had, had everything to do with that fighting. Back for that ball, even even a small diminutive player that he is, Cohen with an early ball across Tui. Right there, though. Bonder, a good job just to get a foot on that one to steer it toward the goal. And now LaSalle, they have some quick strike ability of their own. There's your quick flick down to the corner. Cohen in a foot race, and the push is going to be called on Cohen. A little bit of a rollerball uh, bump there, too. Foot race and a, and a rollerball bump. Two Cohen. minutes and 10 seconds left. Cohen's doing a very good job, though, up front for UPenn, clearing a lot of space for players, playing that uh, classic target man player. Now sliding it up ahead, Colasanti. Is he gonna get the shot? There's the shot, stopped. Rebound, shot, stopped again by O'Connor. And O'Connor's gonna pick it up. All blank, <laughs> breaking loose in the attacking third there is LaSalle. Colasante pulling the ball down, leaving it for Spangler. Colasante probably could have hit that himself, but he let it go for Spangler. And O'Connor coming up big there. 135 to go, Stout trying to play it up ahead. And now Goodwin gonna play it down. Bonder couldn't go after it, he would have been offside. And now 124 remaining, here you there go. Colasante, by all rights, he probably could have hit this, but not really, no, went a little too far ahead of him, and Spangler hit a, a little bit of a bend up. O'Connor coming out well, cut the angle, and a double save there. O'Connor off again, picking that ball. Looks like Hughes wanted to pick it up for yeah. us. Seven <laughs> saves today, two of them coming on that one flurry, and we are down now to one minute left in regulation. Tied at three. Bonner takes it across the field for Healy. Healy saves, not going to do much good. Now it gets started by Zegostowski. 48 seconds to go. Up on top, Walker. Into the box, Colasanti fighting for position. There's your shot stopped by O'Connor. O'Connor doing really well at the near post. Some really good dribbling there by Zegostowski and, of course, Colasanti. 32 seconds, and we've got a corner kick coming now for the Explorers. There you can see the clock running. Maybe their last good shot at it right here.
reserved into the box, headed out of the way by Hughes. Comes another serve coming in. No, going to take toward the goal line. There's your cross, and it's headed out of the way. Some great defending there by uh, Mr. Consistency. Reed Goodwin at the far post. And that ball knocked across to Graham Walker there. If you're Penn, you're not even going to put this in play now. <laughs> Three seconds, two. And that will be it for regulation. So we are now looking at overtime. Here There's again, your that last ball flurry. served at the far post, Scott. Here again, that ball knocked out again. And uh, it's gonna, he's going to get a second try now. Here's where Goodwin really comes up big. Walker trying to get in on it after the this attacker here gets by the Penn defender. Nice cutback. You'll see Goodwin come in. Boom. And wins that challenge. So we're headed for overtime, Scott. Here, Here you take one more look. And as you said, Goodwin coming in and took the opportunity away from Graham Walker, who was trying for the header and would have been the winner in the final minute. Regulation is done. We're going to overtime here at McCarthy Stadium, and we'll be back with it right after this. Every weekend, there's lots of college football you want to see, but can't. One solution, get cloned. Get yourselves tickets and hit the road. Here's a better game plan. ESPN, ESPN game plan. Every weekend, great college football games from top conferences you can't normally see sent right to you. So subscribe now. The ESPN game plan. It can't be duplicated. Check Friday's USA Today for Saturday's game plan. Hi, Chuck. How's business? Okay. Hey, what's on your screen? QuickBooks accounting software from the makers of Quicken. Yeah, I really don't have time to learn new software. If you can write a check, you can use QuickBooks. Answer a few questions and it tailors itself to your business. Create invoices like these. It has accounts payable, accounts receivable, payroll and inventory, and over 60 customizable reports that put you in control. I'm gonna try it. Nothing to lose. Call 1-888-851-1300. If someone already has cable TV, additional outlets are pretty inexpensive, right? What's your point? Let's say I bought a satellite system from you. Okay. If I wanted to buy a separate receiver for each set, that could cost a lot of money. People don't need more than one television in their house. In fact, each receiver could cost several hundred dollars. I don't think that's relevant. How is that relevant? Isn't it true that additional outlets with satellite TV can be much more expensive than cable TV? I don't have to answer that. If you're thinking about satellite TV, you might want to think twice. Comcast, still the best value in quality entertainment. I don't have to answer that. Can't celebrate you because you made a tackle behind a line of scrimmage. That's to be expected. That's your job. Your job is to make big plays. The Penn State Football Story, coming this fall, weekly to the Comcast Network. Well, a wild flurry in that second half. We're at the end of regulation heading for overtime, and things are pretty even with the exception of fouls. Well, let's take a look. As you say, the foul uh, department, LaSalle, having a little more skill uh, than Penn, and uh, Penn uh, being forced to foul them. But again, coming back into the game, Penn uh, getting 15 shots to LaSalle, 16. So uh, Penn uh, did a lot of makeup work there in the second half. All the goals came in the second half. The last five of them came in 18 minutes time. Penn with the kickoff to start this first overtime. It's a 15 minute overtime period. If they don't score, they'll do it again for 15 minutes. And if not, can end in a tie. First goal wins it. And as we call it in America, sudden death, as they call it in Europe and uh, around the world, the golden goal, so either way, whoever scores first, one team's gonna be in shock and the other team's gonna be in jubilation. I guess we're a more negative society here in the United States, huh? We, uh, the golden goal is so much nicer than sudden death. <laughs> I don't know if we want to admit that, do we? Layman with the serve into the box, and Tui corrals it. And Tui going to take the opportunity as everybody backs off to take it right to the top of the 18. And try to set the offense in motion. And off the touch, LaSalle's going to get the throw in. So you got to figure, too, uh, both teams got to be real tired at this point, Scott. And uh, actually, at, at this point, uh, players sometimes want to take more touches on the ball because they don't want to run as much. But uh, there's Calasante with his back to the goal. And he's getting grabbed again by Lehman as it's played and knocked out over the near side by Copeland. 
Another throw in for the Explorers. The secret in, in, in this overtime thing is let the ball do the work, though, because they both teams have really run a long time today. Once again, Welke, the designated long thrower, gets it in. Attempted bicycle. And now the header and a save made by O'Connor. Spangler trying to get, a, get one into the goal there. We have an injury on the play there. And uh, good sportsmanship as O'Connor uh, throws the ball out. There's a LaSalle player down on the field. Here we get the, I think it was Jeffrey Moe trying to, uh, it's either Jeffrey Moe or Graham Walker. I get those two guys confused. They have the real uh, short uh, blonde hair. Trying to do a bicycle kick, uh, turned his ankle. Yeah, there it is right there. And it was Walker. And there's your header. And a nice reaction play made by O'Connor. And you can see the good sportsmanship as uh, LaSalle just throws the ball back into O'Connor. And uh, then gets the ball for UPenn. Playing it up the sideline, Brown. And now Stout brings it up this near side and out the Pennsylvania throw in. When the teams were headed in this direction in the first half, no goals were scored. Colasanti has it stripped away by Healy. And now Dang, you said he's been doing a fine job. They're going to call him on that one. And uh, the rest has been doing a good job today, but I got to say that Dang uh, got all ball that time, and he had Colasante's number here. He tries to turn right, and yep. he just slides the ball away from him. Served in and knocked out. Now up that far side, streaking after it is Suzak. Welke keeps it in. And Alfred Penn, Tara George. Has it taken away? South forgot something. The Bermuda, ball. Bermuda Triangle, Bermuda Circle there. They both lost it right there. Colasanti plays it up. And played off to the far side. Race for the ball on. Suzak keeps it in. And it's knocked away by Kara George. So LaSalle will get the throw in. Welke known for these throw ins here. Let's see who he goes for. Three and a half minutes into the first overtime, tied up at three. Remember, first goal wins it. Throw across the middle, knocked away, still loose. It's on the ground and steered out of there by Lehman. O'Connor got a piece of it there, but the, they took a while from to get that ball cleared. That can't go on for much longer. So I'll look at Graham Walker in there trying to make his presence felt. Long throw. Gonna be steered out of the way. Plant it down, and they're going to put it right back in. And now O'Connor off the line, knocked away. And it's Spangler keeping it alive. He'll try to center and can't. Colasanti now got the drive off the deflected shot, picked off the ground by O'Connor. And uh, Colasanti again letting one fly from about 22 yards out. And I got to give credit to Spangler because O'Connor did not have possession. He stole the ball from him along the byline. Copeland. Slides it ahead. That's Brown down toward the corner. He's trying to keep it alive. Now he got the cross. It's up, and it's knocked away. Penn trying to keep the pressure on. Lehman misses as he tried to fire. From outside of basically 30 yards, he just tried to put it down and fire it. Lehman had a goal in this one. Well, Lehman's got to let it go because... Uh a couple of plays ago, he just start, almost started a counterattack by dribbling a little too much right in that area, and uh, the worst that happens is a goal kick. Lehman goes out, Mayer comes in for Penn. And Brown's doing very well for Penn there to get that ball across. It was a very good defending from LaSalle from both teams in the box so far in this first overtime period. Right into the center of the circle. And LaSalle trying to quickly play ahead. And diving on top of the loose ball was O'Connor as Jeffermo was coming right at him. You know, connor has got to keep getting off his line quicker uh, in this overtime period as his defenders are starting to tire. That was a good job. Back to the middle of the field and headed up ahead. Dang wins the challenge with Spangler. Now here comes Goodwin trying to poke it ahead. And a swing and a miss at the ball by Blessy. There's your cross for Brown. Slides in front of the goal mouth and we have got a whistle. 
has Kara George failing at the far post, but Brown doing well again to get that ball across the area. Well, he was instrumental with a goal that got penned to within 3-2. Here again, Brown, he's a very, very good dribbler. Crossing that early ball, I think it was Cohen missed it at the near post, but the, a foul at the far post. Cohen uh, knows where to run. He's very good timing in the box. Check that. He was instrumental and got the assist of the goal that even this went up and got us where we are now, which is overtime. Six minutes, 12 seconds into the first overtime. Tied up at three. And a quick whistle blow. Now the throw in for the Explorers. Pushed up ahead by Kara George. Brown flying after it too, he comes out and clears it. Dangerous move, but he took it. And now Deng plays up to Healy. Stolen away. Here come the Explorers. Opportunity now. Jeffermo. Got to drive it. And he missed on the shot as O'Connor was right there for it. Jeffermo never really got any big time momentum to release the shot. And with O'Connor diving, he basically put it within the goalkeeper's reach. Now you're right. Shielded the ball well. Probably should have knocked it off right away or shot right away. Took a couple extra seconds. And didn't get much on it. Dang has it taken away. Colasanti plays down. There's your fight between Copeland, Copeland and Spangler. They've been battling all day long. Spangler tried to squeeze off a shot. And now with the ball on the ground, it's taken away by Hughes. Jeffermo was in a battle with Dang in the box. Dang doing very well not to let Jeffermo turn. And he's twice his size. He held his ground. Colasanti. Trying to keep it in, and he did not. Good defending there by Goodwin, and Colasante with his patented step over, just ran out of room. There's a tired CC. He had two goals in this one, in the 53rd minute and the 68th minute. Both gave LaSalle a one goal lead. LaSalle led by as many as three to one. Penn came back, scored the last two to put us in overtime. Challenge one there for LaSalle. Sekistowski doing well there to win that ball for, for LaSalle, but unfortunately unable to get it to anyone on his team. It's Michael Healy. Explorers trying to get a little pressure on. Jeffermo once again with the pressure, and Hughes had to take it over the touchline. So LaSalle with another throw in. Hughes is a tough guy to beat. He can, he can shut you down in the air, and he's got quick feet, too, so he can shut you down on the ground. Healy plays back outside, and now Foote's going to play it straight up the field. Cohen on his horse, but he can't quite get there, so the throw is going to be for LaSalle. And he even six minutes left in the first overtime. Our 99th minute. Run that, run that. Now our 100th minute of soccer. So Healy's going to have the throw in. And he'll go straight up the line with it. Opportunity now for the Quakers as Mayer plays ahead, trying to find Brown. Play back behind for Goodwin, who was also scored today. Reed Goodwin going to take it down toward the corner. Leaves it back behind. At Schwartz. Play back behind and in now. Kara George can't quite get to it before the defense gets there. Penn keeping the pressure on. Copeland to the end line. Trying to center. Brown kept it alive. And Copeland has it knocked away by Spangler. Oh, you Penn has got to get this ball in the box because they're doing very well uh, possession-wise in the attacking third. Something that you haven't seen too much during the game. There's Kara George about to throw the ball in. Throw in for Kara George. Cohen tries to settle. And once again, taken on that far side of the field, up over the touchline. And here we'll see if UPenn tries to lock uh, LaSalle into their attacking third. There's Deng. Playing it ahead. 
Brown can't quite win that challenge. There's Walker. Back to the middle of the field. Goodwin trying to push ahead. Went off the hand of Spangler. And Penn will get to set it. They're going to move quickly with it. As foot goes to work. Now Goodwin serves it into the box. Trying to find the crosser in Healy, but it dribbles on through. And now it comes up over the touchline. Comcast Network will be back in Philadelphia next Wednesday for a college soccer match of the week. Temple and Drexel. Wednesday at 7.30, only on the Comcast Network. And Huey McEnall doing a fine job at Temple and, of course, uh, Lou Mail at Drexel. And uh, they always put uh, two good teams on the field and a lot of uh, people who uh, have cousins and uncles and aunts and uh, sisters and brothers all involved in these Philadelphia knockdown dragouts. Now, this is certainly knocked down, drag out. 3.20 left in the first overtime as Dang plays it over the touchline. 3-3 score in overtime. Colasanti got a pair of them today. Zegostowski playing in, cleared away by Copeland. Cohen with a little bit of a flick. Blessy there. And now Walker plays ahead, Copeland with the head. And now Cara George sees an opportunity, and he's going to take it up the field himself. Got it to Cohen. But it's steered away by the defense. Hughes tried to continue the push. And now Deng's going to get it set for him as he comes to this near side. Bicycled by Spangler. And settled by Copeland. 22 left in the overtime. Cross. Nearly a shot. And it is going to be a goal kick. Cohen said, come on, that's got to be a corner. He has been frustrated here today. That almost was a shot opportunity as it came flying across the box. I agree with Scott. I think Randy uh, Malasuski did some very good defending there. It looked like he cleared it out. Cohen uh, timed his run very well to far post. The only thing he could have done a little different was probably come out a little bit wider, but uh, some very good timing there for Cohen. But again, uh, Lasuski doing a very good job out of Bishop Eustace defending for LaSalle there. Two, he plays to the middle over the head of everyone. Spangler back behind, Walker. Copeland trying to get it down under control now. And it goes over the side, so Penn gets the throw in. Brown is it taken away, but it is going to be a push from behind. It'll be called on Tim Walton. So Penn the opportunity now with a minute 20 left in the first overtime. Chance perhaps for one more rush. And the ball is headed over the sideline as Bonder was trying to redirect it as it came across the box. Yeah, there's a fairly good timing there, but he didn't get a good uh, touch on it. 